Welcome to the video tutorial for DNA size selection using the SAGE HLS platform. The goal of this process is to collect six size bins that include one or more fractions that have narrow fragment size distributions around 15 to 20 kb in length. These are well suited for PacBio's Hi-Fi circular consensus sequencing. However, the collection parameters may be adjusted for other size fractionation that can be useful for other applications. To achieve best results, the most important aspect of the system is to use best practices in the manipulation and use of the Agaros gel cassette. This video will demonstrate the necessary details in this regard and then provide brief instructions for running the size selection and removing the size fractions. Remove the Agaros cassette from the package. Inspect the cassette and packaging for buffer leakage. Small amounts of leakage, one mil or less, are not unusual. In addition to the top adhesive seal, there are small seals on the bottom of the cassette below the gel columns. Inspect these for leaks. If there's a small bubble under the seal, that is okay. Look for obvious leakage and dried buffer residue. Here is an example. If they have been leaking or if there's a large amount of leaked buffer, contact customer support for a replacement. There may be bubbles in the elution channels. If so, it is important that they are cleared. If the bubbles are not removed, they can block electroelution and affect sample recovery after size selection. To dislodge these bubbles, hold the sealed cassette with its surface plane vertical to the ground. Keeping the cassette surface vertical, slowly rotate the sealed cassette 360 degrees while tapping the top surface of the cassette to remove all trapped air bubbles from the elution channels. This may require fairly vigorous tapping. Then collect all the air bubbles into one end of the reservoirs. Either end is okay. This airspace will escape after the cassette is opened and topped up with buffer before a run. Place the cassettes onto the instrument nest. Care must be taken to remove the adhesive tape. It's good to have a Kim wipe at the point where the buffer chamber is first exposed, since during shipping the air pressure inside the cassette can cause some buffer to be ejected. The tape is quite sticky. It is best to remove the tape with smooth, slow, steady motions alternating between diagonal angles. Use one hand to keep the cassette steady in the instrument nest. Once the tape is halfway removed, switch hand positions to hold the open upper side of the cassette in place. It is important to use slow, steady motions. In areas around buffer chamber openings, the tape will release more rapidly. If the user is not prepared, they can inadvertently jerk the cassette from the nest and spill buffer. After unsealing the cassette, elution modules must be completely emptied and refilled. There are six elution wells on a 4.5 millimeter spacing. An eight channel pipetter with three tips can be used to aspirate every other well. The total volume of the modules is 90 to 95 microliters. So set the pipetter to at least 100 microliters to ensure complete removal of buffer from the wells. The buffer may be exchanged within the cassette through the side ports. It is important to hold the pipette vertically when inserting pipette tips into the elution modules. There are soft membranes on either side of the elution module cavity and any contact can damage them. When emptying the modules, Insert the pipette tips slowly into the tops of the modules and remove buffer as you lower the tips to the bottom of the modules. The bottom of the module is hard plastic, so it is useful to gently bounce the pipette tip against the bottom of the module to ensure that all buffer is removed. Fill the wells with 80 microliters of electrophoresis buffer supplied with the kit. After filling the pipette tips, 
Place the tips all the way to the bottoms of the modules and slowly raise the tips as you dispense the buffer. This practice is important to avoid trapping air bubbles in elution modules, which can affect the electrophoretic field during elution. After filling, the elution modules should be almost full with a slight concave meniscus. If they appear overfilled, empty the elution modules again completely and refill. If one or more of the elution modules still appears overfilled, after careful emptying and refilling, the overfilled module may have punctured ultrafiltration membranes and the affected lanes should not be used. The electrophoresis buffer reservoir is continuous all the way around the gel channel. It should be filled right up to the level of the cassette surface. The hydrophobic nature of the cassette plastic makes it difficult to completely fill the elution electrode channels with buffer. Using a P1000 pipetter, the best practice is to first add buffer until the elution electrode channels are slightly overfilled with buffer. Second, run the pipette tip along the elution electrode channels to ensure that the edges are wetted. And third, remove the excess buffer so that the level is flush with the top surface of the cassette. Once the cassette is fully prepared, close the lid. The DNA size selection workflows use pulsed field and direct current electrophoresis protocols to create separation of DNA fragments or compressions of DNA fragments within the agarose column. Examples of eluded size fractions are shown in these gel images. Users should always analyze well contents prior to using the fractions. For this demonstration, we will use the workflow shown on the right. The product in well 4 indicates a distribution around 20 kb, which is well suited for the PacBio Hi-Fi library construction. The product in elution well 2 could also be used for high-pass long read sequencing. On the software main screen, if necessary, press the Clear Run Data button to clear all fields from a previous run. A new run cannot be initiated until all fields are cleared. In the Workflow File field, press the Load Workflow icon and open the Non-Core Workflows folder. Then select the Collection Only 20KB 180F 100R 63V 6-Hour Workflow File. Place a check mark next to the sample that will be run and enter an optional sample ID if preferred. Press the check current button. This will engage the electrodes to the cassette and check the electrophoresis currents in the separation and elution pathways. This will take a minute or so and provide an indication that the test was successful. If a test has failed, the cassette or lane may not have been properly prepared. After the current test is complete, open the lid to load the fragmented DNA sample. There are two wells in the agarose gel column. The square reagent well, which is not used for this application, and the rectangular sample well, into which the sheared or fragmented DNA sample is loaded. First, ensure that both wells are filled with buffer. The buffer should be filled to the surface of the cassette top with a slight downward concave meniscus. If necessary, fill the wells, taking care to avoid getting buffer onto the surface of the cassette. If this happens, wipe the surface with a Kim wipe until dry. Prepare the DNA sample to a volume of 60 microliters in TE. To this, add 10 microliters of Sage Sciences loading solution to a final volume of 70 microliters. Then, remove 70 microliters of buffer from the sample well and load 
the 70 microliter DNA sample. Next, apply an adhesive seal over the wells. It is important that they are tightly and carefully sealed. It is useful to place an unfolded Kim wipe on the lab bench when peeling the backing off of the tape. The backing has a strong charge after peeling away from the tape and tends to stick to lab gloves. We find that the removed backing will stick to the Kim wipe. Crimp one corner and remove the backing. The adhesive tapes are cut to size so that the reagent and sample well ports and the elution module ports can all be covered by the tape. Hold the tape by the remaining backing strip with the backing up. Looking down on the cassette, position the tape left to right and also front to back. After positioning the tape, lower the tape so that the bottom edge sticks to the surface of the cassette. Bend the tape so that it bows towards the cassette surface and then roll the bowed tape across the ports. Immediately after this, seal the borders of the reagent and sample wells using the bottom point of a 15 mil conical centrifuge tube. After sealing the reagent and sample well ports, outline the elution module ports with the 15 mil tube as well. It is important to apply the tape so that the electrode ports are not occluded or else the instrument electrodes can be damaged. The separation electrode port at the right in the video is the one closest to the taping area and the one that requires correct left to right positioning of the tape. However, it is important to consider front to back spacing so that the elution module ports are covered without occluding the elution electrode port at the top of the video view. Once the cassette has been properly sealed, close the lid, return to the main screen, and press Run Workflow. The workflow will run for seven and a half hours and can be run overnight with fractions collected the following morning. Here, the proper technique for removing tape seals is demonstrated. When removing the tape, it is important to avoid mixing between adjacent elution modules and also to avoid transferring potential contaminants from the sample well into the elution modules. Both of these goals can be achieved by pulling the tape off in a diagonal motion from the tape corner closest to the elution module number six. Use one steady continuous motion. This shows the procedure we use for removing high molecular weight DNA products. Always pipette slowly. Again, we find it useful to remove the elution products using a standard multi-channel pipette with three tips to aspirate every other well. We usually transfer the products into 200 microliter PCR strip tubes or 96 well PCR plates for storage. For DNA products greater than 50 kb in length, we recommend using wide bore 200 microliter pipette tips for collected products. We recommend pipetting the elution module contents up and down one time before removing them from the cassette because we have noted that the concentration of DNA in the elution modules is non-homogeneous for some samples. Even with wide bore tips, always pipette as slowly as possible.